Um, that kind of brings me on to my next question. BCS is um, keen to promote uh, greater professionalism within the IT industry because obviously mm. the IT industry is uh, sort of about 50, 60 years old now compared to other organisations, well, other professions like lawyers and doctors who have their own uh, medical counts. You can be struck off if you uh, if you do something wrong. Uh, what are your thoughts on um, governments getting involved to make uh, uh, organisations uh, and the profession in general um, uphold a code of practice? Should it be a, a mandatory thing or a voluntary kind of code of practice? Uh, look, I mean, I think that this is a little bit of a slippery slope. I think that uh, uh, doctors uh, and lawyers, um, I think that uh, uh, they're dealing with people um, on an individual basis. Um, and, um, uh, you know, uh, not only doctors and lawyers, but in the UK, you also have the chartered engineers um, uh, that have to be certified because uh, they are working on uh, public projects, etc. Um, I think the uh, certainly some provisions can be enacted, but I think that the challenge is uh, going to be the, with the enforcement uh, because uh, you have a, a very large industry, um, and I think that uh, you know uh, the question is if somebody is really committing some sort of um, unethical act. Uh, by compromising the data or something like that, uh, those are probably covered by the law anyways. Um, so if you try to enact something, um, you know, does it give you any better coverage than what the prevailing laws do? Uh, and if they don't, then I just necessarily do not see any point. Um, however, having said that, I think given the fact that so much of the economy is being driven by information technology, um, there is probably a, some value of having uh, some sort of, uh, you know, like uh, ethical certification uh, that people can go through every five years or something like that, particularly those people who are dealing with the customer data, um, particularly those kinds of people who are dealing with uh, sensitive data. Considering the sort of IT uh, arena as a whole, what have uh, been the um, IT uh, manifestations which have most impressed you in the recent years, um, you know, technological developments that you've, you've kind of been uh, quite wowed by, particularly in your area? Well, I think that a lot of uh, things have happened in information technology. I'm obviously a beneficiary of uh, the IT revolution. I think all of us are. Um, so some of the things uh, which I mentioned earlier, like uh, the adoption of uh, enterprise resource planning software by large number of organizations across the world, the way the web has become, the internet has actually become an integral part of our life. Um, I don't think that when I was in college, I would have even imagined that. Um, I think internet of things is another thing that's quite impressive. Um, also, I think that just democratization of uh, software, um, that's, uh, that's very uh, impressive. Um, so, you know, you have uh, maps on your cell phone. Um, if you want to communicate with anybody um, anywhere in the world, um, instead of uh, trying to find out how to call that person, <laughs> you send a message and get instant replies back. Um, Another thing that is quite um, interesting um, about uh, the whole uh, information technology or the, the developments in information technology revolution is I think that all of these tools have in general helped in uh, making people's lives better. Uh, and, and that's very important. Uh, I think that's very important. I think that uh, you know, I'm sitting here in England, obviously industrial revolution started from here. The industrial revolution change people's lives for better. I, and I think that we are going through that same phase. Um, and I think that people's lives are just getting better and better. I'm glad you uh, said that because uh, the underlying motif of uh, BCS is uh, making IT goods for society. I was going to ask you what you, what you thought of that, but uh, you kind of already answered that question. 
Uh, I mean, do, did you want to add anything to that about uh, IT being ubiquitous and being... Uh, see, I think that uh, more can be done. More can be done. And I think that, uh, you know, more can be done um, if uh, there is initiative, uh, more initiatives on the part of uh, government uh, entities um, uh, to move things faster, to um, leverage all these initiatives and see how uh, they can serve the people better. Uh, and be it education, um, or be it, uh, uh, be it um, uh, you know, immigration, or be it uh, uh, you know, agriculture. Um, I think that there is significant scope um, for all the government entities to find out why certain things are happening. So why do we have school dropouts? What are the driving forces? Now, I have to believe that the Department of Education or the Ministry of Education in any country, one of their primary motivations should be to prevent dropouts. So I think that there are initiatives that, that can be undertaken, and, but those initiatives have to demonstrate results and demonstrate results over shorter period of time. Not like, you know, I have a 50 year plan and I'm going to probably do something and be able to show you something after 40 years. We have business in US, in UK, Germany, India, France, um, Switzerland, etc, etc. And I think that uh, overall um, the initiatives, um, these initiatives have to accelerate. It's funny you should, you, you should, you mentioned education now. I was wondering what your thoughts are on uh, the uh, education at IT within, you know, uh, colleges and universities, etc. Are you, for example, finding the right people for, you know, to fill the roles in the Yeah, IT education, uh, there is no question that has to be, um, there has to be some introspection across the globe in what we are teaching. Uh, I think the, uh, the kind of courses people are taught um, is outdated. Now, how outdated those courses are, that depends on the institution. Um, so if you are actually uh, talking about the Carnegie Mellon University or Stanford University, they're probably less outdated, but if you're talking about some of the other uh, places or in some other countries, they're more outdated. Um, so I think uh, that's a challenge uh, for employers like us. Uh, so people have to be taught about what uh, you know about the different aspects of information technology whether it is databases or big data or uh, you know parallel programming or whatnot so we have to teach them um, all those things it, it, I think that uh, information technology education they need to go through some introspection like what is valuable what is being used in the industry um, and then uh, you know sort of uh, refocus and uh, redesign these courses. Uh, the, the second uh, challenge uh, uh, I find with uh, information uh, technology, you know, the education of information technology is uh, that, uh, you know, it's sometimes a little too theoretical. Uh, look, I think that uh, there is no harm in teaching theory, but I think that if you're teaching databases, then people ought to have uh, um, part of their curriculum um, structured like that, that they have some practical courses. They are actually working with some databases. So we have uh, people, I have seen people, and we hire from so many institutions across you know, so many places. Um, uh, people come to us and they have taken database courses. Uh, they know the theory, but they've never worked in a database. Um, so, so I think that refocusing is necessary. Restructuring the courses to see what is relevant in the industry. Um, to make things more contemporary and to restructure the courses so that people really have uh, some hands-on expertise uh, or uh, experience so that they can develop the expertise. Um, otherwise, you just teach from the books. I think that it just doesn't uh, help. Uh, it doesn't help the, the, the students. Uh, it doesn't help, help the employers. Um, and I think that uh, finally it doesn't help the educational institutions either. So why do you think um, 
there's, there's less women uh, in the IT sector. I mean, do you think that's, that's, that, that's kind of from school level? I mean, there are definitely more women in information technology than, let's say, civil engineering or true. mechanical that's engineering. That's true, that's true. <laughs> uh, I think that, uh, I'll tell you something that in 1990, when I graduated um, in India, um, there were no women in uh, uh, like civil engineering or uh, in uh, metallurgy. Um, things have changed though, uh, things have changed significantly. But even in our time, uh, we had out of a class of 13 computer science, there were six uh, ladies in our class. So um, I think that uh, with time things have changed. I think, um, um, you know, uh, in 1993 uh, when I started working with the Tata Consultancy Services, uh, we had a significant number of women who actually were part of the workforce. I think that over time the proportion has grown, but uh, yes, we cannot declare victory yet. I think that there's a long way to go. Uh, I think that there's a significant uh, way to go. Now, you're, you're obviously an entrepreneurial fellow because you've uh, obviously jointly founded a company. Um, would you say that uh, entrepreneurs are born or do you think that's something you can you can learn? I mean, uh, who, uh, who are your role models growing <laughs> up? Sort of thing? I, I actually never thought about it like that. I, um, I, um, I you know, I actually uh, never thought about it like that, that whether I have acquired these or, uh, you know, I think uh, entrepreneurship is something that uh, requires uh, someone to be able to take risks. Um, um, and um, uh, in not only just the risks, it's just not risk taking. I think entrepreneurship is about uh, having the passion to go and do something. Um, I cannot tell you whether that is something that you can acquire or you are born with it. Um, it it's just hard for me to say. Regarding role models, I think that, uh, um, you know, I mean, there are several role models that you have, but um, obviously some of my role models are actually from the field of cricket. <laughs> um, so some of my uh, role models who, um, uh, who I mean, I have actually uh, tried to see how they have uh, performed uh, and what they have done. So Ian Botham, Sunil Gavaskar, um, uh, these are, you know, a couple of people I... Uh, I know and I, you know, I, I know not in, uh, like, really know them, but I think that I have read about them, see mm -hmm. how they have actually changed. So, um, you know, those are, that's, that's what I'd like to say. And, and looking back on your career so far, is there anything you'd change if you do differently if you were kind of re reliving it now? <laughs> <laughs> again, that's a hard question to say, right? I mean, <laughs> if I try <laughs> something again, then maybe, um, uh, well, I mean, there are certain things I have considered. I have not uh, delved into them uh, uh, because uh, I thought that that uh, may not work out. And there are other things also that I have considered. Um, but uh, again, I think that you make a choice and uh, you have to make a choice. You cannot do everything, right? So. Uh, you cannot be an artist uh, and a cricketer and a piano player and a politician and an entrepreneur and, um, you know, uh, 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 like an envoy to a country. You cannot be all these things. So you have to make a choice and then you have to just live with it. Now, uh, I think the, the key is that not to have regrets about making that choice. Um, I, I don't have any regrets about making any choice.